Brothers and sisters, why did Paul say that he wept for three years with the church at Ephesus? What was it that moved his heart to the point where he shed tears, not even ceasing, night and day, for three years? Paul says this in Acts chapter 20. He says, Therefore watch, like Jesus said, watch and pray. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. You know, some in the church today would say that Paul warned everyone against these false teachers who would try to tell them that once saved, always saved was not true. With tears, Paul warned them about those who would tell them they must keep repentance and righteousness. That Paul warned them about these false wolves like myself who would try to tell them that if they chose to live in the flesh, they wouldn't go to heaven. That Paul, with tears, told them to watch out for false brothers like me who would tell you that you must live a holy life to spend eternity with a holy God. Beware and run from these false ministers of the gospel like myself who try to trap you in righteous living by grace through faith into obedience. But that's not what Paul said, brothers and sisters. Paul said there would be people, I'll read it, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Brothers and sisters, it is not a perversion to tell you that you must live holy, as Jesus Christ is holy. It is certainly not anything for me to draw you after yourselves to preach against the desires of your flesh. I am not here, brothers and sisters, to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not here to profane the blood of the covenant that has sanctified us. I'm here to share with you the whole counsel of God. I'm here as one striving to become an overseer, a shepherd. I preach the kingdom of God. I testify to the gospel of grace. And I want to finish my race with joy. These are all things that Paul was quoted here in Acts chapter 20 as saying. You know what else he spoke about? It said, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what he taught both publicly and from house to house. Trying to be helpful, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials. Brothers and sisters, if once saved, always saved were true, then why so many tears? Why so many trials? Why such warning? Why telling everyone to watch against these perverse teachers? One answer to this why is found over in 2 Peter. I'm going to be doing a series this week on falling away. Falling away from Jesus Christ. Falling away from grace. Falling away from the faith, brothers and sisters. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. So this is our foundation here in Acts chapter 20. Great warning from Paul. Three years of tears, night and day. Crying both about savage dogs who would come in and also perverse teachers who would rise from within. Two different classifications. First John, 
talks about these savage wolves, these antichrists who come from without. They were never of us, so they would not remain with us. That's in 1 John chapter 2, I believe. 1 John 2. But Peter is going to talk about false teachers that rise up from among us. So Paul mentions both here in Acts chapter 20 when warning the church at Ephesus, the elders of the church. And then Peter now, in 2 Peter, after giving such great instruction in 1 Peter to all the churches in Asia Minor, now he has to give great warnings to these same assemblies of Christ. 2 Peter chapter 1, Paul again spoke about this in Acts 20, but Peter now brings it home. Speaking about those of us who are sanctified, those of us who have escaped the corruption of the world, those of us who are no longer in the lust of the flesh because we've come to know Jesus Christ. This little section here can be a difficult read. It can be challenging to understand. It, it adds line upon line, precept upon precept, idea and idea, forming a doctrine, brothers and sisters, out of which flows a practice of righteousness. And as you go on to 2 Peter 2, he speaks about these false teachers who rise up out of the body of Christ who also had been sanctified by the blood of Christ, who also had come to know Jesus, who also had escaped the corruption of the world, who also had ceased to walk in the wicked lusts of the flesh. They had been saved. They had been born again. They had been filled with God's Holy Spirit, but they chose to go back. And it says that the latter end of them would be worse than the former beginning of them. In other words, before they became born again, they were spiritually dead. But after going back to their sin, they were now twice dead, I believe it says in Jude. I think later in the series we'll look at Jude. We're going to look at the end of James chapter 5. As I mentioned earlier, we'll plan to look in 1 John chapter 2. We'll plan to look also in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. And we'll look in Galatians. Galatians also speak of those who fall from grace by returning to law. There are so many ways, brothers and sisters, to fall away from Jesus Christ. To fall away from the faith that was handed down once for all to the saints, as it says in Jude. But we shall not be like them. Hebrews says, we are not those that shrink back, brothers and sisters, although he, of course, warns that we can, and many do. But brothers and sisters, let's not be those who shrink back and are destroyed by God, who is a consuming fire. Let's be those who persevere in godliness, those who endure to the end and are saved. Amen. This is why Peter also in 2 Peter chapter 1 says to add to your faith virtue and to add and to add and to add, speaking of godliness and perseverance, speaking of brotherly kindness, speaking of love, self-control, to add. He says if you grow in the grace of God, if you continue to add these things, if you have them and you abound in them, then, then, no one can make you unfruitful. Then you will not be barren. If and only if you keep growing in the grace of God. Adding to what you have with more. He says otherwise. You may become spiritually blind. To the point that you forget that you were cleansed from your old sins. Unfortunately many Christians who were born again, seemed to forget that when they became born again, they stopped living in all known sin, whether for a matter of minutes or hours or days or weeks or months or years or decades. <laughs> Something happens when a person chooses to go back to sin. They sear their conscience as with a hot iron 
And now they just think that it's okay to walk in sin. They think they still have God's grace covering them. They think that they're still headed for His eternal presence, although they are living as a rebel against Him. But Peter says, no, make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, then you will never stumble, but you will have a rich entrance into the kingdom of God. In 2 Peter 2, he goes on to warn about these false teachers. This is where it actually says they deny the sovereign Lord who bought them. Brothers and sisters, these false teachers deny Jesus Christ not with their lips. They don't say Jesus is cursed. They deny him with their actions, as it says in Titus. Paul warned Titus that many profess to know God with their lips, but with their actions they deny him. Brothers and sisters, Peter warns about these false teachers who speak as if Christians. They look like lambs. They look like sheep. They look like shepherds. Indeed, they claim to be shepherds. I dealt with one of these false shepherds recently on Facebook. Some supposed apostle Isaac saying that I'm a legalist for saying that we must keep the ways spoken of in the New Covenant. Brothers and sisters, the New Covenant scriptures say, if you do these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God, but you will be destroyed. You'll be cast out, cast in the lake of fire. These things, these known wicked behaviors, these teachers will bring in destructive heresies, denying the Lord who bought them. They will make the way of truth blasphemed. I was headed down this direction. Seasons in my life, I returned to sin. <clears throat> and then even as I was a minister of the gospel, I wavered. I went back and forth. I wrestled. And it became a stench in God's nostrils. And it was a stumbling block for people around me. I drove people away from Jesus Christ. I stepped down from the ministry. And I've never quite gone back into official ministry. I've thought about it. I've tried and I just don't think the Lord has made it clear yet that he wants me to. And so I, I teach and I preach. I host in our home Bible study. So in a sense, I'm leading, but not with an office, not with, not with an authority of a position in the body of Christ. I believe God wants me to humble myself as I believe I have been doing. He wants me to just plow with him, just do the work without a title, without a position, and he'll grant me a title, a position, in the right time, the right place, the right way. But these covetous ones, they exploit the people, they deceive They are not preachers of righteousness. They're wicked ones. They were righteous, but they left Jesus. Although still having a form of godliness, they deny the power. They say, no, thank you. I don't want to be righteous. I like my sin. Oh, God, cover me in my sin. But I like my sin. And oh, God, you understand I'm a sinner. You know that I'm, you know that we, Lord, we, even Christians, are incapable of, of all repentance and righteousness. We're, we're always going to have some kind of besetting sin. Heavenly Father, such hypocrisy, brothers and sisters, such wickedness. 
It is sad and it is scary that they are denying Jesus with their wicked behavior. God is able to deliver the godly out of temptations, Peter says. But these men have eyes full of adultery. They cannot cease from sin. And they entice others. They forsook the right way. This is the part you need to meditate on. If you're still watching, please hold on to this. It says they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. And while they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, brothers and sisters, than to know it and then turn from the holy commandment. They've gone like dogs back to their vomit, like pigs back to the mud. This is why chapter 3 of Second Peter says that we must keep in mind these things. We must remember these things. We must hold on to them. He says we must be diligent to be found blameless. Having this salvation of God from sin, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, that all should have eternal life that is by grace through faith into a righteous obedience. But these people, these false teachers, they twist God's words to their own destruction. This is how Peter closes. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him, the glory both now and forever. Amen. So, today is Monday. What is today? January the, I think, 24th. Uh, so tomorrow, Tuesday, we'll plan to jump from here in Peter over, I think we'll go into maybe 1 John chapter 2 and talk about these antichrists who never were of Christ. But these false teachers in Peter, it says they knew Jesus. They escaped the corruption of the world by knowing him. And so again, Paul in Acts 20 spoke about two different types of false teachers. One who was born again, but has gone back. And the other, who never was of Christ. Second Peter speaks of those who were in Christ, but who left Christ. First John 2 speaks of those who were never in Christ. They were always antichrists. I love y'all in the Lord. If you want to keep in touch, my name is Joshua Gravis. Add my middle name, Evans. You have my email. Joshua, J-O-S-H-U-A, Evans, E-V-A-N-S, Gravis, G-R-A-V-I-S, at gmail.com. My phone number is 571-466-0085. We can talk or text or email about Jesus or about business. I'm a realtor and I'm in construction. If I can help you, let me know wherever you live. My name here on YouTube is Joshua Gravis. I make videos here, Lord willing, Monday through, Monday through Thursday. And on Facebook also, I do a live video each Friday, Lord willing under the same name, Joshua Gravis. And if you want to give to the ministry, Joshua Gravis on PayPal. May God bless us each, brothers and sisters, according to the great blessing found in Acts 3.26, that God sent Jesus to bless us by turning us away from our sins. Let's be turned to God in Christ, brothers and sisters. Let's live a righteous life by grace, through faith, into obedience. Let's talk soon, and thanks again for being here. All right, goodbye, everybody.